Turn to your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 3. We're going to be discussing verses 19 through 20. Romans, chapter 3, 19 through 20. Romans 3, 19 to 20. When you have the verse, please stand in honor of the Word of God. <clears throat> and thus says the Word of the Lord. It says, Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Let's go to the Lord prayer. The most gracious and heavenly Father, we praise and we glorify your holy name this evening, Father. Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity that you give us as believers in, in your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, to gather together, to sit before your throne of grace, Father, and to hear a word straight from your mouth, Father, straight from your lips. We pray, Lord God, that you would be with us as we expound on your word. We pray that you would open our understanding, that we might understand your word, Father, and that we may put it into practice. Bless everyone that is here, their families, and bless those that will hear us through the internet, Father. We give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're continuing our teaching on works of the law under the law. And we're going to be discussing a scripture that sometimes people misunderstand and misinterpret. Now I want you to see what it says. It says, now we know that whatsoever, whatever things the law says, it is speaking to those who are under the law. Now, when we put this into context, who during the time of Jesus were under the law? Anybody tell me? Okay, the Pharisees. Who else? Huh? Everyone. And who was everyone? The Jews. Every single Jew during the time of Jesus, prior to the time of Jesus, after the time of Jesus, were basically under the law. Now who were the ones that were not under the law? The Gentiles. They didn't know anything about the law. So notice what it says. Now we know that whatsoever thing the law says it is speaking to the, to the Jew, basically. And to the Gentile believer. Because you've got to understand that the context of the book of Galatians is believers that have backslid. They have stopped trusting in Christ and His finished work on the cross and they've gone to trusting on the old law, the rabbinic law. What they call today Jewish wisdom. So right there we put the definition for cursy, rabbinical law. They were trusting in works. Now what are some of the works that the Jews were trusting in? Can anybody tell me? Okay. They thought that if they kept the rabbinic laws which said don't spit on the ground on the Sabbath that they were pleasing to God. They thought that if they took their false feet off they were working and they were displeasing to God. Or they were pleasing to God. Really they were displeasing to God. They had a lot of things that they couldn't do. They couldn't walk so many feet. Because if they did it on the Sabbath it was work. And they thought that by keeping all those rules and regulations that the priests, the rabbis, the Pharisees, the scribes placed upon them that they were right with God. How many of you know that works don't save us? 
The Jews themselves knew since the Old Testament that works didn't save them. It's all over the Old Testament. The only thing that saved the people back then was looking forward to the Messiah and what he was going to do. Now we look back to Calvary, what he has already done. See, they were also trusted in deeds. Have you ever heard a parable in the Bible where it talks about um, uh, an individual came to Jesus and asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The belief of the Jew was if they did one great deed, just one great, one deed so great that they would automatically go to heaven. So therefore, if they gave all their money away, <clears throat> they would go to heaven. If they would die for somebody, they would go to heaven. Now, those deeds are commendable in and of themselves. But these do not take us to heaven. The next thing is rituals. What rituals did the Pharisees or the Jewish people perform? Does anybody know? Huh? Washing their hands in a ritual. Where they had to hold their hands like this and pour water. So many times. I forgot, maybe it was seven times. I'm not sure, I forgot. But anyway, they would go through that ritual to be cleansed. But all you have to do is get bar of soap and wash your hands. That's it. But if you didn't go through the rituals, you did it wrong and you were sinning against God. And for not doing it correctly, you could not go to heaven. You have a question? I think the Lord was always doing that because you always tell them God wanted to do the outside. You know, he's talking about the, yeah. the outside of the cup. That's very true, brother. So we're always trying to the outside. See, religious true. leaders that technically are not called of God are always working on the exterior of the person. Uh, brothers, from now on when you come, wear a white shirt. Wear a suit. Sisters, wear a dress, no lipstick. Make sure the dress is long. Men, cut your hair. Women, let your hair grow. They always have man-made rules and regulations. None of those things save you. Uh, one of the things about a false preacher, a false teacher, a false prophet, is that they're concentrating on the outside. Many times they concentrate too much on the building. Which is the true spiritual building? This building or you? You are. And we are supposed to concentrate on build, building you up and not the building. Although, should we neglect the building? No. But our main focus, our main emphasis is in teaching you the truth so that you you can grow as a building. Need to fit together. Um, the Bible says we're spiritual stones that are being built. And, and God is building a building which is called the spiritual church. And it is composed of cells of every individual that's a Christian. And God wants us to know the truth because the truth will set us free. Free from what? Free from sins. If I don't know the truth, I'm going to believe false preachers that say we're sinning Christians. That we can't stop sinning. And let me tell you, the Bible teaches that we can stop sinning. <coughs> Now, does the Bible teach that we about sinless perfection? No. The Bible does not talk about sinless perfection, but it does talk that we can live victoriously where we don't have to sin on a daily basis. Because if I call myself a Christian and Christ is living in me and I'm sinning on a daily basis, don't expect to go to heaven. Sometimes there's people who say, well, how many sins will take in heaven? Only one unconfessed sin. Did you die in that sin? So, today, people are just like the Jewish people in the olden day, in the olden times. Today, in churches, there are people that are still trusted in works. Can anybody tell me 
Some of the words that people are trusting me today. Say it louder, brother, because they heard you. Okay. Although that would be a ritual to a certain extent. Okay. That is a belief. Okay. Baptism. Okay. That's a word. If I get water baptized, they believe I'm saved. Now again, I've mentioned this before. The Bible re refers to there's only one baptism. Although, don't we have two baptisms in the church? Don't we have baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit? But the Bible says there's only one. Why does it say there's only one when we have two? Only one that counts. Only one that matters. And the one that really matters is baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, baptism of water is an ordinance that we're supposed to keep. But too many people have been deceived into thinking that if they get water baptized, they're saved and on their way to heaven. That's why so many churches practice baby baptism. Because they're afraid their baby will die and will not make it to heaven. But again, water baptism doesn't save. And we really are not supposed to baptize babies. I know a lot of churches practice it. But, uh, baptism has replaced circumcision. Just like the people back then were trusting that they were circumcised and they were going to live with God in His kingdom. People today say, because my child has been baptized, because I have been baptized, I'm a child of God and I'm going to heaven. And that's not true. Only way that's true is if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. You're in Christ and Christ is in you. Now, can anybody think of any other works? Philanthropy. Donation. Okay. Good works. Doing good deeds. I hear people in the world that aren't even Christians say, well, I give money to the poor. Well, giving money to the poor, is that going to take it to heaven? No. Sometimes I hear people say this. Uh, brother, brother, uh, I haven't worked with the Lord in so long. Let's have a fundraiser. They think that having a fundraiser and selling enchilada, tacos, hamburgers, is a good work and that God is very pleased with that and because they're doing that, they've converted the house of God into a kitchen, they're going to go to heaven. Bible speaks against selling things in the church. Bible says, do not make my father's house a den of thieves, a house of merchandise, where you're selling your wares. Everything in the kingdom of God is supposed to be free. Nothing is supposed to be sold. But the problem with preachers today is that many of them are false. They're more concerned with money than your souls. And it's like we've said before, a man that really loves the people that is called of God, he's not after your money, he's after your soul. He wants to make sure that you grow in knowledge and understanding of the Word of God so that you will have victory over the world or victory over Satan, victory over yourself. Because you know who your strongest enemy is? Not Satan. Yourself. We deceive ourselves. We lie to ourselves. We cover up our sins ourselves. The devil has no power to make you sin. A lot of people give him a lot of power. It's like, what was the name of that actor that said, the devil made me do it? Flip Wilson. The devil cannot make a child of God do anything. He is powerless. Now, your own heart that is deceivable, deceivable about, about all things. It causes you to sin. And then when you sin, it, it causes you to gloss over it or to cover it up and to say, well, there's nothing wrong with that sin. Everybody does it. And we begin to justify ourselves. And as we continue in that sin, then that sin becomes iniquity. And it's like the Word of God says, not only are we going to die for the sin that we commit, which is transgression against the Word of God, but we will also die for our iniquity. Those pet sins that we say, they're okay, I'm human, God 